class we'll be talking about the concept of sea floor spreading and this concept was given by Henry Hess. Now in the previous lecture we have already talked about an important concept in oceanography where we have discussed the ocean basin relief. Now for understanding the concept of sea floor spreading it's very important that we go back to the class of oceanography where we talked about the bottom reliefs. So when we talked about the ocean bottom relief we try to understand that ocean surface is similar to what we have on our land and you have kind of mountains, you have flat topped hills and you have deep trenches. So these mountain, these are known as ocean ridges, these are known as guyots and these are the trenches that are found mainly in the ocean reef. So ocean relief when we talk about we have these three main features that we will try to incorporate in this class along with that we will try to understand the previously discussed continental drift theory. So now why was sea floor spreading concept introduced and what was the reason that continental drift theory was criticized. Wagner gave the continental drift theory where he said uh, the earth was a kind of one mass and it slowly drifted away and there were continents formed individually. So that was what Wegener explained. But Henry Hess who was basically a geologist and also a US Navy Admiral did many researches of the ocean bottom during World War II to understand the locations of the enemy submarines. So to understand those location of the submarines, he did extensive study of the ocean bottom floor and while studying the ocean bottom floor, he came up with certain phenomena and he said that it's not really that the continent is dividing or there is one landmass that is breaking down, rather it is the sea floor or the floor of the ocean that is slowly and gradually expanding and because of that expansion continents are drifting away. So in very simple terms he said there is new sea floor that is being added to the lithosphere. So I can say it's new sea floor and this new sea floor is being added to lithosphere. So that was the basic idea what Henry has proposed. Now coming on to this world map you have the lines with blue color that indicate the major ocean ridges. So as you can see the various plates and the major ocean ridges here. What has propounded was at the region of this ridge there is volcanic material or molten magma that drifts up. Because of that you have the two plates that move apart and since because of this there is pushing of the surface you have both the continents that are being drifted apart. So what he propounded was if there is a region with trench nearby okay this region would slowly and gradually be pushed apart but if there is no deep trenches there would be a kind of slow movement as compared to the other case. So as you can see here you have Eurasia and North America. What he propounded was because of the mid, mid uh, Atlantic ridge you have molten magma that's coming through here and the sea floor is spreading as a result you can see the two continents drifting apart. So he said the idea was not what Wegener proposed under the continental drift theory where he said one landmass breaks up into different landmasses but rather it's the sea floor that is kind of pushing the uh, continents apart. So to understand this he tried to explain the concept of magma driven conveyor belts. So he talked about magma driven conveyor belts. Now this is the main essence of the whole idea of sea floor spreading and you must be very very clear with it. So let's start. This region is the ridge. Let's say this is the mid Atlantic ridge. You have North America on one side and you have Eurasia and Africa on other side. 
what is happening here is you have molten magma that flows up when the molten heat and uh, hot magma goes up it tries of it tries to spread out on either side so when it spreads the region towards the center has new rocks or new formations it is hot and it is less dense so these three things are to be noted very uh, precisely towards the center where the hot magma is rising since it's hot this region would be hot this is newly formed region and it is less denser than the surrounding region as in when the plates move apart or the sea floor spreads the region which is away from the mid atlantic ridge the region that is far away from the mid atlantic ridge would be having older rocks it would be much cold as compared to the center of the mid atlantic ridge and it would also be more dense so these two things to be very clear about the mid atlantic region or the mid atlantic ridge where the magma is erupting up would be new it would be hot and less dense and the region away from the mid atlantic ridge as i said previously would be old would have colder uh, region and would be more dense now since it is cold and more dense it would try to subside down so there would be subduction that would occur here so what is happening here is it's a kind of volcano that uh, if it is erupting under the ocean it would be towards the mid atlantic ridge but if it is towards the coast it would come out in the form of volcano so when it erupts the hot magma moves up the center region where the hot magma is coming up would be hot and it would be less dense but as it goes away from the core of the magma rising this region would be colder it would be more dense since it is cold and more dense it would tend to subside so this region would be the zone of subduction so what would happen here is the magma would go down and this magma would again form the uh, kind of conveyor belt so what we call here is the magma driven conveyor belts as you can see so what is happening is magma is rising here going towards the subduction zone so getting suppressed and then again leading to the formation of magma here so this is how it goes on and on so if we talk about the south american coast and the african coast the coast towards africa does not have many trenches as a result there would be higher pressure of spreading in this region so it is said around in last 250 years there has been a drift of 10 mm per year approximately and these two continents have drifted apart based on this rate so we he said that this drifting is not due to what wegener proposed under the continental drift theory but it is due to the spreading of the ocean bottom so <clears throat> this is how the whole mechanism of sea floor spreading works now as you can see in another diagram here you have the convention belt uh, convention currents that are going in the mantle so these convection currents what they do is they affect the mantle and the core and finally you have the hot magma rising that takes place here you can see the subduction zone here and again the rising magma as i explained previously so according to uh, henry has atlantic ocean is a spreading so atlantic he suggested was spreading but on the other hand pacific ocean is shrinking since there are no trenches in the atlantic ocean it's not subsiding the whatever magma is rising is not going in so it's kind of spreading or uh, helping the continents drift apart so he said atlantic is expanding on the other hand pacific ocean has huge number of trenches as a result pacific ocean is shrinking so these were the two findings that he tried to uh, explain and he said if there is 
no subduction what would happen so if there is no subduction that is going here it will push the continents apart so if there is no subduction it would push the continents at a faster rate so the north america uh, so the american continent and the african continent are being pushed apart at a higher rate because of this region because of the lack of subduction zones there now the next important concept so we've talked about the process of sea floor spreading and the mechanism of sea floor spreading the next important thing is evidences that support the sea floor spreading now when we say the evidences that support the sea floor spreading the first and the foremost is the magnetic reverses now <clears throat> under geomagnetism we will study you have the earth's north pole and the south pole and then you have the magnetic poles but the magnetic poles keep on switching when i say keep on switching that means this becomes the magnetic north and this becomes the magnetic south and these kinds of switches over the past thousands of year have taken nearly have taken place nearly 173 times you have seen such polar reversals and because of these polar reversals what is happening is you have changes in the polarity so what can be seen here is you have a series of a uh, old rock new rock old rock new rock and that's due to the switches in the polarity or uh, the magnetic reversals that takes place so because of that when henry has tried to study the ocean floor he said there is not a clear evidence that we can find all the new rocks together and old rocks towards one side rather there is alternation of a uh, old rock and a new rock so that was one of the major evidences that confirmed this the next evidence was that the age of the sea floor and that was determined again by the polarity so you can say due to the magnetic polarity these this region of the sea floor is old this region is new this region is old and so on uh, then he talked about uh, that if continents would be one what wagner suggests then sea floor is spreading how would we understand that so he said there were already continents were apart and sea floor is spreading just held them to drift further apart so rather than considering the uh, assumption of wagner that continent is one single mass he said that if continent would be one then there would be no possibility of drifting them apart so they can drift only if they are separate so he talked about that there was not one common pangea as explained by uh, wegner that was another understanding of this uh, another evidence that suggested sea floor is spreading and lastly wilson tuzo wilson who laid forward the plate tectonics he later on considered that um, continental drift could not be formed as the basis for plate tectonics theory that he wanted to propound so he said plate tectonics is a merger of continental drift theory along with sea floor spreading so he said if i merge these two theories together i can propound the theory of plate tectonics and plate tectonics could be propounded by including only including sea floor spreading because he talked about the divergent and the convergent zones so he talked about plates moving away and those can occur only if we try to understand the concept of sea floor is spreading so when we'll start understanding the plate tectonics we'll see how if you have a egg that is hard boiled and if you try to squeeze it you will have the upper uh, shell of the egg that gets crushed out and it kinds of breaks into so if this is a shell you have it kinds of breaks into plates and these plates try to move apart similarly we have the liquid mantle over which these plates try to move so he propounded the concept of plate tectonics that we would be covering in the next session where he tried to explain a similar concept based on the sea floor is spreading and the theory of continental drift so you can subscribe to our channel for further updates on geomorphology have a good day ahead